Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back, Dimitri here. And today we're gonna to be talking about the seven main fragrance families. And hopefully this video will instruct you as to which family suits you the best and maybe help you understand how perfume are actually classified. That way, whenever you go to the perfumery shop, you don't feel overwhelmed by the millions of bottles that surround you and you don't get pitched the latest fragrance that just came out a week prior to that by the sales assistant who are specifically instructed to sell you the same fragrance over and over by big companies. Now, if you're a newbie and you happen to go by the perfumery shop, I suggest that you ask the sales assistant to point you toward the direction of the most unique scent in the shop and you start from there. But an even better option would be to actually know what fragrance suits you the best. Hence the reason why knowing the fragrance families is very important, I believe. Now I'm gonna go in chronological order and start off with the one that started modern perfumery. This is none other than the citrus family. Now. Of course, most of you will know by now that the first Acqua di Colonia was created by Giovanni Maria Farina in the early 18th century. What many of you might not know is that the formula was just perfected because the actual creator of the Acqua di Colonia slash Acqua Mirabilis is Giovanni Feminis, who was the mentor of Giovanni Maria Farina. Hence, he should be given most of the credit. Now, what Giovanni Maria Farina did is perfected the formula and made it regular from batch to batch, meaning that for the first time you had perfumes that smelled the same from batch to batch. And it was an instant hit, obviously, as you can imagine. If you're drawn by the zesty, invigorating and uh, energizing notes of citruses, then this is the perfect scent for you. It is for the relaxed and laid back people that do not want to offend anybody and it is a perfect fit when you start off the day and you get out of the shower you just spray some citrus based scent what i personally use is eau de cologne by the house of Garna, uh, sorry by the house of chanel which to me is the ultimate eau de cologne and the only citrus based scent that i actually need so after that, in 1881, you have the creation of a fougère. Now, fougère literally means fern in French, but unlike many people might think, fougère is not an interpretation of the smell of fern. It is just a fantasy name that was given to the perfume fougère royale by the house of Oubigan, simply as an abstract and as a fantasy name. What it was actually meant to replicate was the smell of nature, the smell of humidity in the air, of wet trees, damp soil, and cracking leaves on the ground. It was meant to represent nature. So the main accord in the fougère is obviously lavender and coumarin. You also have some herbs. So if you're drawn to that kind of fresh and easygoing, simple notes, then that is the perfect scent for you. It is the perfume, the scent that all of us witnessed as kids when we went into our dad's toilets and we smelled the shaving foam and the cream, the aftershave cream, all those barbershop type of products are extremely reminiscent of a fougère perfume simply because they all include the same fresh lavender material in it. So this kind of perfume would be perfect as a signature scent for a virile man and somebody that actually says, come here, give me a hug, you're safe with me. An amazing, amazing scent. If you go to the store and try Oubigan Fougère Royale nowadays, beware because it does not smell obviously nothing like the original formula, despite the fact that the sales assistants will swear on their mother's name that the formula never changed. Know that Oubigan, unfortunately, is one of those old brands that kept 0% of what it originally was, unlike Guerlain and other greats. Now, that being said, we need to proceed to the year 1917 before we meet the third fragrance family, which is the Chypre. Now, Chypre is obviously created by François Coty, probably the biggest perfumer and the most important perfumer of all times. He happened to 
be inspired by the island of Cipro in Greece in order to create a scent that represented the smell of mosses. You need to know that in Greek mythology, Aphrodite, who is also known to Venus by us Roman and maybe by you as well, who was the goddess of love and who came rising from the water foam and started walking on the beach, used to sleep namely on a bed of mosses, hence the reason why mosses is the main accord of a sheep. The other two main notes are citruses and something called labdanum. Those three ingredients make up the sheep, which is by far the most mysterious and incredible of all the families. It is the driest, it is the most unique accord that you can find kind of retro it might be dangerous nowadays to wear a sheep perfume because of that retro feel that old vibe that it gives but the temptation is really great this is something that a very sophisticated and classy man or woman will want to try to me the best one is of course mitsuko which is probably the most important one right after sheep by francois coty Next, guys, we have to jump to the year 1921 for the first real floral perfume. That is the year where Chanel numéro 5 was launched. Now, of course, back then, other floral perfume were present in the market, but most of them were called or were made up of one floral note. So they were called Soliflor. This is the first perfume, guys, and probably the most important perfume of all times that actually mixed a bouquet of flower and created a wave that still is present nowadays, guys. This is the billion dollar perfume, ladies and gentlemen. This thing sold 80 million perfumes since the day it was launched. It is worth a fortune and it is the most important perfume in the game, guys. You might say that it's dated. I personally love this juice. This is honestly one of the most sophisticated accords ever created. But if you wanna go back to the actual family of florals, this is the family that people who are drawn to floral bouquets obviously will be very drawn to. It's for the easygoing and carefree ladies. It is something that is quite simple yet very particular and beautiful to wear. Next up, guys, we have the family of leather, which was created in 1924 with the perfume called Niseten. This accord was also made up and created by the great Francois Coty. This guy is honestly a legend, but this perfume, guys, know that launched many other scents that revolutionized the world of perfumery. Whoever is drawn by the notes of birch, by the animalic notes of castorium, by the notes of ink, will love the leather family. It is for the very bold and uncommon men, and it is also for the very forward-looking women one of the best accords to me personally in perfumery nowadays and to me the ultimate leather scent which is not Nizetan by the way to me for now from the ones I've tried is this bad boy which is none other than Cuir by Lancôme unfortunately discontinued and I don't understand why how can a perfume like La Vie est Belle sell millions of perfume bottles every year and this be discontinued. There is something wrong with today's population if this thing happened. But since you can't find Cure Lancôme anymore, I suggest you go ahead and try supposedly the most luxurious and the epitome of perfection in leather, which is Cure de Russie by the House of Chanel, which I'm planning to buy, of course. Then. All of a sudden, in 1925, the family of Orientals was born with the iconic perfume Chalimar by Guerlain, which I do not own, unfortunately, not yet at least. So if you happen to be drawn by notes such as vanilla, benzoin, cinnamon, ambergris, myrrh, incense, and all those very rich and voluptuous and mysterious accords and materials, then this is the perfume for you. It is the 
epitome of a special occasion scent. Something that is beautiful, sophisticated, and mysterious. Last but not least, we have the woody family of perfumes, which happens to be very hard to actually trace back. A woody perfume is something that can be basically the masculine version of a floral perfume of a woman. It is something that is very easy to wear. Men really love this kind of DNA for that typical raw and uh, simple note accord that usually makes up woody perfumes such as cedar, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood. It has a very sawdust type of smell and for the sake of naming a date because it's very difficult to actually understand when it first came out, I'm going to tell you that the first woody perfume that was really a big hit in the market is the perfume called Vetiver by Guerlain, which came out in 1951, which is probably one of the most successful perfumes from the house, and uh, namely one of the best vetiver-based fragrance in the world. If you're a man of simple taste and you like raw, uh, quiet, yet rich materials of woods, this is the perfect type of scent for you. Now guys, I think I went, I went through all seven. I want to give you a little bonus and include three fragrance families that are not official yet very present in today's market. And those are the aquatic family, the fruity family, and of course the green family, which of those three is pretty much the only one I enjoy. You must know that aquatics I'm not really a big fan of. It is the type of smell that you'll be drawn to if you like the feel of sea spray and the smell of wet air after a thunderstorm usually made up of a synthetic material called cologne which i do not enjoy at all <laughs> i think i mentioned that already so that is the generic type of smell that people who are into sports will enjoy the most then the fruity of course is the fruity accord of the juicy and edible notes such as pear uh, melon could be strawberries and any sort of fruit perfect for a modern woman and then of course the green scents which is a lovely accord created for the lovers of freshly caught lawn or twigs that are cut in half and woods and natural smelling perfumes such as for example my beautiful bottle of era one by the house of Dusita. this is one of the most loveliest green scent ever created along with Vert de fleur by tom ford probably the two best ones that i own so guys 10 fragrance families seven official three are not Hopefully this will help you to understand and be a bit more knowledgeable whenever you go into a perfumery store. Now you can guide the sales assistant to where you want to go. And I will see you again in the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good day or a good night, whatever the case might be.